our show passed a pretty cool milestone last week. On Friday, the day after our last episode came out, this podcast turned 10, sort of, conceptually. Lately, we haven't been producing shows for 10 years, but May 21st of 2011 was the first time we tried to record an episode. Keith, myself, and a non-Eli third guy recorded a sample episode, and the result was so horrible in every possible way that we decided not to do anything with it at all. The audio quality was shit, the content was all over the map, the humor was strained. Basically, it was a great lesson on how much more shit we needed to learn before we made a podcast. It would be almost two years before we put together our next episode, which became episode one of this show. Now, it might seem odd to some people that I would even remember that date so precisely, unless they remembered what else was going on on precisely that day in history. Or unless they've heard me tell this story before, apologies to longtime listeners if I'm being repetitive here. But it just so happened that our practice record lined up with Harold Camping's prediction for the end of the world. He and his acolytes managed to ignore the fact that this wasn't the first time he'd set a date on the apocalypse and the fact that the radio station that he owned still had shit scheduled for the 22nd. They embraced his latest prediction with a terrifying gusto and decided to ring in the end of the world together right in the heart of American sin, New York City. Heath and I, of course, lived in New York City at the time. Hell, the, the store that we worked at was on Fifth Avenue. And that's precisely the street where Camping's followers gathered for the big apocalypse. Hell, Camping was so accommodating, he even scheduled the end of the world for 6 p.m. local time on a Saturday, and Heath and I were getting off around 5. I was writing the schedule at the time, and that wasn't a coincidence. But anyway, now, for those of you inclined to make me feel old by not really remembering this shit, I should remind you that Harold Camping's ministry spent hundreds of thousands of dollars leading up to this thing, buying up a bunch of billboards, telling everybody this was going to be the day to the end of the world. I mean, you know, there are failed apocalypses three times a week these days, but this was one of the few recent ones that really insinuated itself into the public consciousness. And unlike the last one that did that leading up to the year 2000, this one insinuated itself under the heading of dumb shit that stupid people believe rather than, you know, reasons I need an insane amount of bottled water in my closet before midnight tonight. And let me just say that watching the disappointment play out in person was an unforgettable moment because, you know, we're watching them, but they're watching us watch them, too. And we're watching them watch us watch them. And on both sides of the line, everybody's thinking those poor dumb bastards have no idea what's about to happen. And then as if some atheist prankster created a weather machine for just this occasion, in the minutes leading up to 6 p.m., the skies actually did darken in Manhattan. I mean, it was nothing all that dramatic, but gray clouds filled in the sky just as they're entering into their big countdown. And at exactly 6 p.m., a stiff breeze picks up and a bit of rain starts falling. And you could see a look of condescending vindication wash over their faces. But then it, it just stopped. <laughs> it's like, you know, 123 raindrops fell, the wind died back down, and then the sun came out. And they all wore this weird-ass expression that I've never seen before and I hope to never see again. It was an expression that just said they were profoundly disappointed that me and all the people around me weren't dead. That's the kind of shit that sticks with you. I mean, look, the, the fact that their end of the world coincided with our practice record, that was a coincidence. Saturday evening was the easiest one for us to all get together for a couple hours. We, we planned it way in advance. So I'm not saying it was the inspiration for this show, but looking back on it now, I feel like the stark terror I felt when I watched them begrudge my survival had a lot to do with the reason we invested the next year and a half learning how to do this shit. It's exactly the kind of thing that reminds you why atheist activism matters.